Hey there, Chart friends. Lamont here from Chart Guys, checking in on the electric vehicle sector and plug. Okay, so uh, we're not losing sight that the weekly time frame has yet to consolidate in any kind of meaningful fashion for ten weeks now. So it's 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 a little overdue, and. Tesla is one of those names that you know can very easily lull you into a false sense of security because there are so many days when it's strong, even when the market is weak. But you know it's not immune. <laughs> you know this was like a sixty percent pullback, right? So you know, and this was over a week. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is over seven weeks. So less than two months, and it can lose sixty percent of its value. I forget how much this was. This was a big one too, fifty percent. So you know, let's let's not. Let's not lose sight of that, okay? So just be cautious out there. If you have long exposure, then you know if you're not exiting or taking any profits, then you'll probably want to at least explore some uh, hedging options. Not necessarily with options, but hedging solutions. <clears throat> okay, so we're looking for a weekly high. Well, no, not not yet. If we see a daily trend change to the bears, then we will be looking for a weekly higher low over three seventy nine eleven. And we're just starting to see the beginnings of consolidation right now. Uh, for UTD traders, you know, we are potentially perfecting a nine here, right? I think on the daily we just did. Yes, on the daily we just perfected a nine. So we anticipate one to four bars of consolidation. Uh, or, you know, if we see the red one and the red two under the red one, then the price flip and then the red two under the red one, then we will. Keep our minds open to the potential of a bit more consolidation. Okay. So what are we looking out for here now? We are looking out for a daily higher low as well. Anything over 614.23 would be one. Now I don't know how deep this correction will go. I have no idea. I only know where I'd be most interested. And so I would be most interested. Oh, that's right. I think this is all already marked up, isn't it? Yes. Around 695 is where personally I would be most interested. Why? Because that's where the, all this last volume was traded. The bulk of this volume was traded around here. And you can see that the pivot for the month is there as well. So I might even open it up. The daily uh, TD support, this thick green line that's been printing up, has also never been tested. And very often the first test is, is good for a hold, very often. Uh, so there you go. There's one. There's one right there, right? And here's another one right there. And typically the longer the time frame uh, for this setup, the better. But and there's one and uh, well, you get the idea. There it's 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 not it's not infrequent, uh, the the amount of occurrences. Alright, so and of course if you took that short off of the zone of interest marked off on I don't remember when, off of the channel resistance. Good for you. I personally was waiting for a little bit higher. Unfortunately, I was looking at 890 and it just didn't get there. Uh, normally I would have done 88888. Oh, it wouldn't it didn't get there either, but just because <laughs> I'm 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 Asian and that's a lucky number in our culture. So very often I will meme trade with uh eights just just for the fun of it. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're looking for a daily higher low now. And even if the first hourly oversold conditions don't make for that daily higher low, we are still interested in that, well, I am at least, for just a short-term play. So it's going to be different whether or not your extended hours are on. With extended hours on, that's going to come into play much sooner. Whereas if you have it off, like like I typically do, then it's it's all the way down here. We'll probably, it'll probably be, you know, come up a little bit if price comes down, and so it would be... Right around there, probs, and I can see the four-hour TD support is here. I wonder what the <coughs> excuse me, what the Vegas way is like, all the way down here. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. No, I'm gonna play it. <laughs> I'm gonna play. It. All right, so for a short-term bounce tomorrow, just looking for maybe a lower high, I'm probably gonna be a little bit aggressive here and use the extended hours. By the way, somebody, um, you know, asked me about the setups, why I don't trade them all. Um, there's too many. <laughs> there's just too many. Uh, I, I, I like to lay out the trades, potential trades, you know, and and because I, that that would it's basically any trade that I lay out 
will I would accept it, right? But you know how much conviction I have, I I don't explicitly say, but I think typically you can tell. Like if I get super excited and I'm like I like this trade, then that's usually one. But I mean, let me know, right, in the comments or if anything, or email or hit me up in the comments if you're a member. I mean, in PMs if you're a member, but. Yeah, if you if people prefer that I, I only talk about something that I would have had conviction in, that's that's fine too. I just figure you know there's more appeal, right? Because everybody trades differently, you know. So what seems like a good trade to me might not really feel like it to someone else. Did we set that up on Thursday? I don't remember. I think so. I forget. Anyway, so I'll probably look to play like. Probably pretty similar to this, honestly. As we come down to this S1, if the hourly is oversold, I'll, I'll probably start looking there. Something like that. And if we do make it down to the 700 level, I would start getting very aggressive. Uh, I'd definitely start getting bigger down near 700. But for the first hourly oversold balance, just looking for like a lower high, I think something like this is. Pretty reasonable, okay. And so let's see. And if depending on how much pullback we see tomorrow, I mean, honestly, that's this is already getting. If we see more downside tomorrow, a daily lower high is probably likely, unless we see a massive bounce that like you know takes back much of this candle. We're probably looking at some kind of daily EQ or consolidation or maybe a controlled downtrend. I don't know. Or we just rip, right? We can very easily just like kind of grind the resistance. You see it all the time. Uh, nope. Well, not on this current run, but <laughs> you do see it. All right, so we're looking for that daily higher low. Hourly oversold bounce is on deck tomorrow into the ADMA. It has the potential, you know, who knows? We, that could be the, that bounce could set the hourly higher low. But again, I'm most interested down here near, near 700. Alrighty, so Neo, I was, I know we were looking for the potential short off of this channel, and uh, we gapped up, and then there was selling into the end of the day. Change, I think, I believe there was an hourly trend change. Yes, so there was an hourly trend change, and well, that's only with extended hours on actually. Uh, but pr 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 pretty much. Oh, interesting. With extended hours on, it's really uh, well, what else? So yeah, we were looking for the potential of shorting into the channel support, but I didn't feel great about it because, you know, because it got too high, right? Had it happened over here, I would have felt a lot better about it because just like over here, when we had that short, there was price action levels to short off of, but over here, there wasn't. So I didn't really love this short as much, although I, I did leave the channel resistance line up just because I'm curious, right? And so like, for example, tomorrow now, if we were to break to lower lows and come back and back test it, I, I feel like... That would be a pretty good shot if we if the bears can make some more space right right now they're just looking for an hourly higher low anything over 56 dollars will be one um but if we are to come down tomorrow and then pop up i i, I would like that ideally five minute overbought conditions into this channel uh looking short but remember that's with a move down first so let's see right now we're just uh, at 60 32 with extended hours on yeah we're like hmm, well With them off, we were still just looking for an hourly higher low over 56, and I do prefer to chart with them off. Alrighty, so and the pivot is right there. So let's see. Neo Bulls are definitely looking for a daily higher low, and you can already start scouting it because, like I said, the hourly trend has changed uh, with extended hours on, and that's you know good enough for a lot of people. So ideally, you will have like 15 minute oversold at least. All right, so. It's definitely on the table and me personally I like that honestly I like it just like this if you can like open up your range uh, to that last daily higher low I think that'd be better if you're more of a swing trader if 5% is too much for you maybe you'll have to just zoom in I don't know I'm getting a lot of messages about like the mechanics of the trade itself I can't be too specific right be because Again, I don't know what, what everybody's accounts are and, and what their holdings are, what their exposure is, all these things, right? So members, uh, by all means, keep keep messaging me and I'll do my best to answer. 
Um, yeah, so I, I don't hate something like this, looking for a daily higher low. All right, so Neo tomorrow, we're looking for a potential short off the channel resistance if if the bulls of the bears i mean can push down a bit to make some space for a lower high and the bulls are looking for a daily higher low with anything over 4908 being one workhorse so this trade went well i guess it went right to target um oh no i'm sorry it came a bit short of target but again this is a situation where really if, if you're able to be at the desk especially if you know that pivot uh for the week is right there you should just take it off like at least take some partial there you're so close to the target and you know double digit percentages even on one fill you know it's it's worth it it's in the long run it's it's gonna you know people often kick themselves over letting something like go and then it runs more for them don't don't do that to yourself just <laughs> just focus on on the good right it was a good trade just just pay yourself and be done with it um <clears throat> okay so let's see here we are watching the range. Primarily, we're watching this range, right? And that's really all we care about right now. So we're looking to see if potentially we will come back down and test this level again. Now, I don't think that's terribly likely, at least not, you know, like another situation like this, only because we have these bear breaks with no follow through into a very strong move. So I'm like leaning more bullish to workhorse now like you can you can see how much time we've spent up here compared to down here uh in recent history at least it's been you know there's more more there's more volume up here well there's more time up here although it is kind of an odd distribution so all right let's not speculate too much on that either way the bulls are looking to set a daily higher low now and in order for them to do so we just want to see an hourly trend change which has not occurred although these bear breaks with very minimal follow-through is a good sign for bulls and that's another reason why like if you saw one two three bear breaks with minimal follow-through you know look to come out of your position right you always consider what's changing even if you have a target always consider how how the context is is changing anyway so back contesting the eight ema looking like potential to hold no hourly trend change yet tomorrow so if the bulls can show up and defend this low of 2455 and break the higher highs over 2589 they'll change that hourly trend and bulls will be looking to test that range again that range resistance up at 2799 there's a few resistances to break as well so you know just just be mindful of that right and that, that that's kind of why i like these zones right the zones cover more than just one level because i mean resistance is is really not so static it, it's kind of it's more like a membrane than than like a wall you know um all right so i think that pretty much covers it we're looking for to test the range resistance again potential hourly trend change to see more bounce follow through and if they if the bulls do get the hourly trend change tomorrow that will be that will set the daily higher low at 24.55 if however the bears can come in and defend this high of 26.36 and break to lower lows under 24.55 then we'll continue looking for that daily higher low anything over 1972 will be one and XPEV. All right, so just like we were, is exactly what we were talking about, right? I don't know where my upper rectangle went, but um, we were talking about the. Hmm, that's weird. Hold on one second here. Oops. I must have deleted it for some reason. All right. Well, anyway, they, we, we we had a just like we have this green box down there. I recall having a box drawn up here and i believe it was drawn like this i don't remember exactly i i probably would have wanted to use this high that's very likely now i don't know why i would pick that though i don't really love that to be honest okay so let's use i don't love that either that's just too much range uh -huh. Well, we'll use nah. all right so this is a case then where i'm just gonna go with uh, one ray for now and i'm just looking at that because that's the highest close you know what you know what we'll do we can do it like this and then we'll just use the wick of this whole range right so just give us like a more it's it's helpful just conceptually right like to because you train yourself to think okay well this this has to hold or i'm not going to be in a trade and so often a trend line breaks and then 
you know, reverses, right? Anyway, so we're looking for the potential of this. This is not drawn correctly either. I believe it was like this, and then I used the lowest close after that occurred. Yes, it should be like this now. This is the range that I care about the most. The highest close of this consolidation structure, the lowest close of, it, close of this uh, sideways structure. So that's what we care about. That's what I care about most right now. So we're just watching range, the range. And when we're, whenever we're range bound, we care more about playing the range. Like, this could very easily like trend change down and then reverse, just like it did here. Trend change, reverse, right? So the bulls are here. They're playing defense. They're just not showing up to play any offense. And this daily trend change without any follow through is a bit of a red flag. So the potential of a daily bear flag is there, although the structure is odd because of this wig. So I don't love it as a bear flag, but just something to be mindful of. And as long as we're range bound, the only traits that I like are off the ranges. Hourly hour oversold into into here for a short, hourly overbought into the lower end for a uh, long. And you can see the bell curve is getting like pretty distributed. And I wouldn't be terribly surprised. If we start spending a lot of time down here, then I would anticipate that this is going to fill out like such. And then we can be shorting off like the POC as well, but uh, one thing at a time. So let's check the hourly trend. Hourly trend is now bearish, but the bears are not getting a lot of follow through straight into a bit of a bounce. That being said, I don't care so much about the trend, the hourly trend, um, just because again, we're in this uh, range, right? So right now, if looking long tomorrow, I would look something like that. And if looking short, I would, I would look like that. All right, so just making sure that you start when the hourly is getting extended. Okay. All right, and finally, Plugo. Alrighty, so plug, we are looking for a daily higher low. Looks like the gap was not filled. It was not filled, almost filled the gap. <clears throat> Let's see here. Wow, what a strong day after after initial selling, huh? Impressive. Alrighty, so let's see. Still stalling though. We are still stalling, you know, from this price action over here. And I believe sure why this is on there instead of uh, actually and for the bottom I'm just using this level here because it was the actually I would rather use the last little lower high before the dump down and I guess it would be this one really all right, so the logic here is the last little lower high close before the dump down, and then the highest close of this consolidation structure for my zone of interest. And you can see that it is currently struggling right about in the middle area, like pretty much right in the middle of it. Let's see. Yep, and there. From a TD perspective, this is very strong. With this nine, with this one over the nine like that, it's trying to go parabolic. I would not be surprised with an $84 test at this point or in between these two. Yeah, I would not be surprised by an $84 test. Anyway, um, the weekly TD is also very bullish. Daily, let's see. Yes, it is fine. All right, so that being said, let's stick, get back to the basics. Uh, we are looking for a daily higher low, if anything, over 30, 40 being one. There's potential of this one being set already. We just got to check the hourly trend. Uh, no trend change to the bulls, but such a strong close on a day where the market's close weak. So that's definitely a good look um, relative to the market. Let's see. 
So really, we're just being mindful of the hourly trend when it comes to plug. Uh, I still like this trade. I don't know. I don't, what? When did I set this up? I still like this trade. Um, you, it's it's uh, probably, you can probably narrow it down a bit. Oh, I, I set this up for investor type. So, you know, something like that. I don't, I don't hate something like that. Let's, let's actually mark off some levels here. So that's the highest close of this little consolidation thingy. Last little higher low. And lowest close of this consolidation. All right. So I don't hate something like that. And like I said, I, I, I think uh, we can get to probably like 84-ish. Wow, okay. So I mean, <laughs> if, if, we, if it can get that deep, uh, that'd be good. I kind of doubt it. Man, that's so deep. Probably not going to get early or, well, we'll see. Let's see. I don't want to be too, too speculative. That's what I care about the most. So for plug, we're just watching that hourly trend. And if the bears can take it, we're looking down here for a potential daily higher low. Well, this is the ideal situation, at least to get extended. And if you're a bear, I would just kind of chill, honestly, <laughs> like it's kind of violating what you would normally expect. It's much stronger than you would normally expect. That's big volume to normally you have weekly oversold like i mean overbought like this such a high weekly rsi reading and you're not at all-time highs and you're in a, in a previous area of resistance you know you normally you anticipate more of a reaction even the monthly is torqued at 97 and the three month as well the quarterly chart although we are printing a nine on the quarterly chart but obviously many days left so yeah, normally, you know, you're looking for a yearly lower high with monthly overbought. Oh, it's not, a, oh, I'm sorry. No, you've got the yearly trend chain, so you're not looking at that. But either way, with so many timeframes extended in previous resistance, you, you know, you'd think that these sellers back here would unload, but maybe they're just very bullish now. Alrighty, I think that about covers it. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you all soon.